Dotted line, plan for the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! I'm living, praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. I'm living, praying for a brighter day. Some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. Maybe you should do something useful and join my father's regiment instead of trying to write about it. Reporting on what's happening in the war helps us pull together. And fighting in the war helps us win. Since Congress has now made it clear that it does not consider it in the best interest of the United States of America to promote me to Major General, my only honorable course of action is to resign. How'd you like it if Moses forced you to write a story about some unsung hero of the revolution? What could be so great about this Ludington guy? I'm glad you agree with me. Come on! I'm starving. I hope dinner's on the table. Stop right there. State your business. Uh, this must be the wrong house. I'm looking for Colonel Henry Ludington. I bet you are. James Hiller? Yes? Welcome. I'm Henry Ludington. This is my daughter, Sybil. Good to meet you, Mr. Hiller. Likewise, I'm sure. <laughs> Please? I'm so hungry. This bread is delicious. Please pass the potatoes. James, I expected you'd be famished from your trip. I was. There'll be action for you to cover soon, James, now that spring is upon us. In the meantime, Father's militia protects patriots from Tories. The lobsterbacks hate him. Father's got a price on his head. And 300 English guineas. Dead or alive. It's a reward I swear will never be collected. No wonder you were suspicious of me. How do you want to pursue your story, James? We'll help you any way we can. First, I'd like to interview you, Colonel. Then, I guess, interview one of your men who saved someone from a Tory. Interview? What for, Mr. Hiller? So I can write about what they've done. Why? I'm a journalist. I let people know what's <laughs> happening in the war. But why aren't you fighting? What I'm doing is important, too. Hmm. This being planning season, James, my militiamen have scattered to their homes. You'll take him to see Alexander Seiler tomorrow, Sybil. Yes, father. You don't suppose he's not here, Mrs. Adams? Benedict Arnold not present for a ball thrown in his honor? No, I expect we'll find General Arnold. Ladies and gentlemen. There. General Washington and I need men, and we need them now. They needn't be soldiers, I will make them soldiers. Fine words. Bravo, Mr. Arnold. Mrs. Adams. And Miss Phillips. General Arnold. What a delightful surprise. I beg you excuse us a moment, Mrs. Knox. My friends, I have hoped our paths would cross again, Miss Phillips, away from the field of battle. I'm afraid Sarah's told me of the disrespect you received from our own soldiers at Fort Ticonderoga. We took the fort, ma'am. Nothing else mattered. Mrs. Knox, I've been looking all over for you. Where do you expect fortune to take you next, General? Philadelphia, perhaps. I too will be headed there soon. 
I have enemies there I must face. How far from the city are General Howe and his army? Not the British, Mrs. Adams. I'm speaking of Congress. Whatever do you mean, General? Congress has seen fit to promote five patently unqualified men above me in the military chain of command. Against the wishes of Washington himself, who has written them on my behalf, if they do not correct this grievous affront, I shall to Philadelphia. Because, ladies, my honor is at stake. And in matters of honor, I simply cannot compromise. Well, sir. A true gentleman. I am sure, General, that you will receive satisfaction. There must be a mistake. Of course Congress will show its appreciation for the work you've done for your country. Miss Phillips, tomorrow I leave for New Haven in the house of my sister Hannah. Oh. My friend, it is on the way to Philadelphia. I would be honored if you would be our guest there. Then, if you wish, you might accompany me to the Capitol. I think it's a wonderful idea. What do you say? I would be delighted, General, if you will permit me to write your story for Dr. Franklin's Pennsylvania Gazette. Mrs. Knox! And what about that dance, eh? <laughs> I suppose that would be acceptable. Watch me, Derek. Under two fingers of loosely packed dirt. There, you're helping feed your family. <laughs> Sorry. What's wrong, Mr. Hiller? This is boring. There's no story here. Then maybe you should do something useful and join my father's regiment instead of trying to write about it. I don't need you to tell me how to be useful. Obviously you do. Reporting on what's happening in the war helps us pull together. And fighting in the war helps us win. That's it. Where are you going, Mr. Hiller? To pack. I'm going back to Philadelphia in the morning to find a real story. Please don't let Mr. Hiller leave, Sybil. Hmm. Since Congress has now made it clear that it does not consider it in the best interest of the United States of America to promote me to Major General, my only honorable course of action is to resign from the Continental Army. Dearest Hannah, please have my uniform pressed by morning. General, although this is good for my own country, I'm truly sorry. General Arnold? Yes? 1,500 Redcoats are landed at Compo Point. A bunch of Tories are with them. General Worcester thinks they're heading for Danbury. Tell Worcester I am coming. General, may I come along to report on... Stay here. Hmm. Come, children. I hope the rain stops so you can leave tomorrow, Mr. Hiller. You and me both. Lobsterbacks, Colonel, running wild in Danbury. Come in and get dry. <sighs> Must have my militia here immediately. But who will gather them? I'll gather them. It's a 40 mile loop in the dark and rain, Sybil. You're just a girl. You must stay here to lead them when they arrive. We have no choice. It's the only way, Father. I wish, my dear, you weren't right. How do I get to Danbury? The men must 
must come right away, Sybil. <clears throat> yes, Father. By dawn at the latest, if we're to get there in time. James? I have to see what's happening in Danbury. I'll see you there, Colonel, or I'll report back. Be careful, Sybil. I will, Father. You too, James. Out. No time, Edmund. Danbury's under attack. Ride east and tell Robert, Israel, and Paul to be at the Colonel's by dawn. Will do, Sybil. Yeah! is ablaze. No, truly, not the whole town. The Redcoats are sparing Tory homes. How do they recognize those homes? In the Bible, the story of Passover tells how the Israelites marked their doors so the Lord would know to spare their firstborn. <gasps> the Tories of Danbury have painted stripes on their chimneys. So the British soldiers know to spare their homes the torch. General Arnold's passion has forced him back into the fight. It is a passion for freedom shared by so many of his countrymen. But Benedict Arnold's is a passion for more than freedom. It is a passion for honor and for glory. Maybe even for battle itself. Not content with setting fire to their homes, the British insist on terrorizing the citizens of Danbury, too. Ready, take aim! Arnold's is a passion that maybe even victory cannot satisfy. The British have decided not to carry American armaments away with them, but to destroy them. Yes, they can destroy our arms, but surely they will never destroy the spirit which I have witnessed in the likes of Colonel Ludington and his daughter. I've got to warn the Colonel! to meet General Arnold and the Redcoats. James, I know you want to report on this action, son, but we need your horse. Yes, sir. Come, friends. Let us repay the British for their wanton destruction of our neighbors' property, homes, and lives. We must meet Arnold before the lobsterbacks reach the coast. Yeah! <laughs>
Having completed their task of destroying half of Danbury, the British soldiers will automate their ships to return to New York headquarters. the Royal Marines saved His Majesty's soldiers from complete destruction. General Arnold led his soldiers in the rout and nearly perished in the process. Let Congress dare deny the General his promotion now. Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go hence. Pardon me, James, but your dispatch from Danbury is stirring. Thank you, sir. I came to write a story about unsung heroes of the Revolution and got more than I bargained for. I should say so. I feel quite as if I witnessed these awful events myself. I want my readers to be as angry as I was when I was in Danbury. Maybe it'll help them realize how important our fight for freedom really is. James, I expect it'll do just that. They're surrounding the house. The reward for capturing you. Run, Father, run! Children, upstairs. You two girls. James, I'm going to face them. I'm not going. I know how we can get an entire regiment into the house right now. We might have to do this all night, just to be sure. I said they'll never get you, Father. Miss Ludington? Yes, Mr. Hiller? You know that story I'm writing about unsung heroes of the Revolution? Yes, Mr. Hiller? With your permission, I would like to write it about you. Mr. Hiller? Yes, Miss Lunnington? I suppose that would be acceptable. Although you, the Congress, have finally seen fit to promote me to the rank of Major General, you have failed to return to me the seniority my actions merit. Therefore, conscious of my own rectitude, I hereby resign from the Army of the United States of America. Please, sir. You're the finest field general we have. 
Should my country need me and were my proper rank restored, I would gladly lay down my life for my country. General, please accept my sincerest thanks for your companionship. I shall never forget our time together. Miss Phillips, your company has been one of my few joys these past months. I've come to think of you almost as a daughter. I do hope we will meet again. I fear for my friend, Moses. General Arnold, why? Sometimes I think he's destroying himself with his own bitterness and anger. Hello, all. James! Mon ami! <laughs> Hi, Sarah. It's so good to see you, James. I've read your dispatches. You and I nearly crossed paths in Connecticut. That's some fine work you've been sending us, James. Thanks, Moses. Wait till you see the story I'm working on now. Is it a story of a great military hero like Sarah is about General Arnold? No, Henri. It's about a different kind of hero. And I can finally call her a friend. <laughs>